but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered the devil, It is written, one does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. And the devil said to Jesus, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to the devil in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on a parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to the devil in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. For a time. For a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's remain standing, invoking the Holy Spirit as we ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to nourish us with this sermon that I have prepared for all of you. Come, Holy Ghost. Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Speaking of the devil, the one phrase I hear the most is, the devil made me do it. <laughs> the devil made me do it. And this leads me to think of this uh, one couple. You know how it is, all you uh, ladies. You know, you were getting ready for church this morning. And uh, what... What did you say to your husband as you looked at your closet and the, and the, 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 the doors cannot close of, your, of the closet because there's so much in there? What did you say looking at him? Honey, I've got nothing to wear. <laughs> I know you all, ladies. I know how you are. Well, this one couple, they made a deal. And that was that she was not going to buy any more clothes. But. You know how it is. She was walking through the fashion show mall. And from the window, there was this dress that enticed her. And she walked in and she bought the dress. But the Bible says, sooner or later, that which you do in the dark shall come into the light. So her husband found out. And he says, honey, I thought we had an agreement. You were not going to buy any more clothes. And she says, oh, but... The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. And he says to her, to his wife, well, why didn't you tell 
the devil what the Bible says, and that is, get behind me, Satan. And she says, oh, honey, but I did. And, and he told me, she says to him, and he told me that it looked even better from behind. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like that in our life. We like to use the excuse, the devil made me do it. And yet, in the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, we say, lead us not into temptation. Temptation doesn't come theologically by way of the devil. Because God is all-powerful. God is more powerful than the devil. The devil has to play on God's playground, in other words. There's nothing the devil does to you that is not first and foremost permitted by God. We know that from the first chapter of the book of Job. The devil is there idle, not having anything to do. And God sees him and God says to the devil, why aren't you doing anything? Go and test somebody. Go and tempt somebody. Go and put somebody to the test. And the devil says, well, I've got nobody to test because you have them all protected. You have them all covered. And God says, well, haven't you seen my servant Job? And God says, well, I can't, you know, God, God says to the devil, haven't you seen my servant Job? And the devil says to God, well, I, I can't do anything to him. Take your protection off of him for a little bit, at least so I can do things to him, test him. And God says, okay, I'll let you test him. But no harm will come to him. No harm will come to my servant Job. And that's what happened in the life of Job. Because God allows all the tests in our life. And what is the test in our life? You heard it today in the gospel. The devil tempted Jesus and he departed from Jesus for a time at the end of today's gospel. When is the next time that the devil comes to tempt Jesus? On the cross! When Jesus cries out, My God, why have you abandoned me? That's the temptation to feel that you are alone. And we never walk alone in this life. We always walk with God. The power of God is always with us. You've got that power in you. You see, we are all great believers because you're here. You believe in God. And what do you want? A cookie because you believe in God? You've got to believe in the power of God. That's what it's about. And God is all powerful. And that means he is more powerful than any problem, any test that I have or experience in my life. I have to believe in the power of God. Is God if God is with me, who can be against me? Or what can be against me? No harm will come to me. Yes, no. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you with their hands. They will support you lest you dash your foot against a stone. You've all got an angel with you, your guardian angel, to support you and to guard you and to protect you. No harm will come to you like no harm came to Jesus. He came out well and so will you in whatever test you may be facing in this life. It may be cancer. It may be a marital issue. It may be some other sickness or depression or you've lost a loved one. Huh? Like Sarah, our bookkeeper, last Sunday, her husband died. Huh? She's going through a test right now. Her family's going through a test. Huh? And in the midst of darkness, what are we to do? You have two choices in the midst of darkness like Sarah does right now. She can either curse the darkness or light a candle in the midst of darkness. And she's choosing to light a candle. A blessed and exercised candle. Not just any candle. Hmm? What is it that we do during Easter? We light a Paschal candle. And Jesus said what? He says, I am the light of the world. You can either focus on the darkness around you or light that candle and focus on the light. 
because the light came into the world. And the light is in the world. And the light is in your world. In your world. And the light shines perpetually. That's one of the University of Chicago words. Perpetually means forever. Huh? And it shines forever for Al, your husband, Sarah. Huh? Because he hasn't died. He just changed places. He went from an earthly existence to an eternal existence. Huh? And you didn't say goodbye to him. You said, see you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. Huh? That's what we do. Huh? Christianity is a walk. You ain't stuck, in other words. The devil wants you to be stuck. You are not stuck. We walk. Psalm 23. Did you notice how... Jesus answered the devil. He, the devil knows his scripture better than you or I. Hmm? And in order to battle, because this, this life is a battle. We're in war huh? against all the evil forces. That's what the Bible says. Our, our battle, our war is not against the powers and principalities of this world, but of the next. Those evil forces that want to depress you. Huh? and bring you down, and let you think that you are alone. Huh? Make you feel like Jesus did on the cross. My God, why have you abandoned me? But it always strikes me that Jesus said what? Did he say, God, why have you abandoned me? No. He didn't say, God, why have you abandoned me? What did he say? My God, why have you abandoned me? In other words, he's mine. huh? He's not the Pope's God. He's not the president's God. He's not my neighbor's God. He ain't my wife's God. He my God, okay? That's, you know, he mine, okay? He's my God. And that means I'm going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay in my life because he's with me. The devil wants to make you think like you won't be okay. Hmm? And that's why you have to light that candle in the midst of the darkness. Whatever darkness you are facing or going through in your life at this time. We are not stuck. We are walking. Christianity in the beginning was not called Christianity. It was called the way. Hmm? The walk. When the early Christians were asked, what are you on? They said, we are on the way. The walk. The Camino. Have you heard of the Camino de Santiago? That's where they got it from. You know, the, the thing that people go to. Martin Sheen's movie. You know, you see, that's where they get it from because Christianity is a walk. We continually walk. The devil wanted Jesus to get stuck. Focus on your bread. Focus on your situation, in other words. Focus on the fact that you've got no bread and turn the stone into bread. Huh? Focus on, on the fact that you, you need power in your life. Huh? Focus on the glory. Focus on all of that. And we are to be focused on God in our life. That everything will be okay. You'll be just fine. For that, we need faith in our life. Hmm? Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the word of God is Jesus. We need him in our life. We need spirituality. That's what Lent is all about. You know, we marked ourselves with the ashes this coming uh, this past Wednesday. How many of you got your ash in church on Wednesday? Raise your hand. Okay, the rest of you, you didn't get your ash in church. Don't worry, I got some today. You can get some ashes, okay? Since you didn't get your ash in church. Ash, I said, okay? You can get some today too. And that is to mark this holy time, 40 days and 40 nights of transformation in our life. Mm -hmm. Ashes are a way to clean ourselves. It, it, we had uh, some silver that was left over from family members that lived in the Ukraine because you do know that my family is originally from what is today Ukraine. And then after the Second World War, they were transported in cattle cars to what used to be Germany, 
but today is Poland, because at the conference of Yalta, Churchill, Stalin, and Roosevelt, they divided up the map of Europe. Uh, and that's how the movement of my family took place uh, after the Second World War. But we had some pieces of silver that were brought from the Ukraine to Poland that my grandparents carried uh, in the few belongings that they were able to bring. And when they would clean them, we didn't have any of the paste that they have nowadays to clean silver, you would use ashes! Because ashes are really soap in the Bible to clean you. Hmm? The devil has dirtied you up hmm? by making you feel dirty. Hmm? Making you feel like there's something wrong with you. That you won't be okay. That you won't make it in this life. That's why you gotta come to church to get cleaned. Hmm? That's why we put the ashes on us as a sign that God is cleansing me, cleaning me. All my sins are forgiven. I gave you absolution at the beginning of Mass. This is one of the beautiful things about being part of the Polish National Catholic Church, is you can receive the absolution for your sins, to get cleansed. Why, you all need a cleansing. Not, you know, cleansing where you you people are into these cleansings nowadays where they, they poop things out or you know all that stuff. Okay. You need a spiritual cleanse. That's why we're here. Hmm? That's why I wish for every single person here. Why do you come to church to mass? You come to hear these words. You are important. Your life matters. Your problem matters. Huh? You'll be fine. You are loved. You are forgiven. God is with you. Hmm? All will be well. I always get taken back when I read this particular gospel. Man does not live on bread alone. To the time in 2019, May of 2019. Picture this. May of 2019, a 14-year-old young man hangs himself in the garage. And the family, they had six kids, they come and they say, Father, we want you to baptize him. We want you to baptize him. I can't baptize a dead person. And then they became like church mice. Every single mass I'd see them. Every Bible study. Every church event, they were there. They never came before. And I said, because normally, you know, I celebrate funerals and the people, you know, I never see them. Okay? I said, so I said to them, why are you coming now? At every church event and at every mass. And the mother looked at me and she says, we are doing this for our son because he had been asking them for two years to go to church and they always told him the same thing that so many of us say which is what we don't have time we're too busy man does not live on bread alone where is the most suicide taking place in the world. Is it in the poor countries where people are dying of hunger? No, it's in the West! Where they even have assisted suicide. You can go and you know, kill yourself if you want. It's in the West. It's in the rich countries where everybody focuses on material stuff. Huh? Where is the most drug addiction? In the ghetto high schools? Or is it in the rich high schools? I could give you some names here, but I won't, because I'm, I'm recording myself here, okay? I participated in high schools, affluent ones, Catholic ones, 
unbelievable drug addiction and they have to pay like $30,000 to go there. Huh? I went to public schools and I turned out, I think, just fine. Huh? Huh? And I went to ghetto schools in Chicago, Schubert School. Huh? You look it up, where I went to school. Huh? Shootings were there. Hmm? Yeah, I lived in an inner city immigrant neighborhood in Chicago. And it was the struggle that made me who I am today. Hmm? The tests. Hmm? Welcome the tests in your life. They were good for Jesus, and they're good for you. And walk. Keep walking. Don't remain stuck. Remember, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not stuck, Psalm 23 says. Are you stuck? No. Walk. You risk nothing in life. You gain nothing in life. Life is a risk. Huh? I'm looking right now at Kelly here. Okay? She's just moved here from Washington after a long time living there. It's a risk, isn't it? Huh? But you risk nothing, you gain nothing. Hmm? Life is a risk. Dating is a risk. You two took a big risk dating. And look, you know, they've been married now, what, seven years? Yeah. And they're, after a few tries in your life, you're really, you're all good. Huh? Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Keep trying. Get on those dating apps. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're depressed, go see the doctor. Huh? Do it. Start an exercise program. It's all good for you. Huh? You gotta be in the battle. Huh? Risk it. Walk. What did God say to Abraham? Get out of your land and start marching towards the promised land. What about Egypt? You know, the, uh, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. And what did God tell them? You gotta walk 40 years. Huh? They were struggling. Hmm? Do the same in your life. Whatever it is that you have to do. You know, um, the other day, speaking of the devil, I just got to tell you, because I've got all these baptisms going on. And during the baptism, I have to ask the question of the parents and the godparents. Do you reject Satan in all his works and all his empty promises? And so I asked that you know, to the parents and the godparents at the baptism a couple weeks ago. I said, do you reject Satan in all his works and all his empty promises? And the godfather looks at me and he said, I can't, Father. I've got two kids with her. <laughs> Did you like that one? Oh, I got other ones. <laughs> For next week. <laughs> I'm glad you're all smiling. Everything is good in our life. Relax, it will all be fine. As we stand and profess our faith, I believe in one God. <laughs>